We welcome you all to our 12th Man Production Studio. I'm Will Johnson here with Coach G. Guerreri. This is the Aggie Soccer Show. And Big 12 play got underway this past weekend. Texas A&M was at home against Colorado. Then they had to go on the road to play the Nebraska Cornhuskers two days later. Friday against Colorado, Sunday against Nebraska. And Coach, this match with Colorado, they were coming off a very big win. So they kind of had a hot streak going. Weather wasn't very good in College Station. The match didn't go your way either. Well, it didn't, and uh, you know a lot of that. There's a lot of things you can look at, but uh, by and large, was, I thought that uh, Colorado was excellent on the night. They uh, mm -hmm. they worked hard. Uh, we gave them uh, an early gift early in the uh, game, bit of a uh, bit of a mix up on uh, on the goal, and we go down one nothing in the first half. Uh, not clearly not our best half as far as effort goes, um, but. As, as you would expect from our team in, a lot of, in, in almost every situation this year, they, they responded well in the second half, came out, and for you know, about 30 to 35 minutes of the 45 minutes, I thought we were excellent. Really uh, set up a lot of chances. Uh, Merritt Mathias, uh, around the 60th minute, is able to, uh, to pull us back even on a great individual effort, a great shot that beat the goalkeeper to uh, you know, Merritt's lower left corner. And then, uh, you know, several chances for us to, to go ahead and try to put this game away. Even in overtime, we, uh, we have a couple chances early to, to, uh, to finish the game off, and we don't. And, you know, when you, when you let a team hang around like, like uh, Colorado, mm -hmm. eventually something uh, bad can happen. And, and that did happen in, uh, in the uh, 99th minute, and we end up getting a loss at home, which is uh, clearly against the norm for us. And, we start off this season on, uh, or at least the big four part of the season, in a, in a bad way with a, with a loss. And again, the players are very upset. We were upset about it. But, uh, you know, again, I think the mark of, uh, of what this team is about is sometimes how they respond to adversity. And, mm -hmm. you know, to go on, to then have to turn around and go on the road the next day, go up to Nebraska, one of the most physically dominant teams and a, a real, uh, have a, has a real propensity for bringing physical toughness to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we went into that game a little bit wounded, and uh, I was I was concerned about it. But things always work out when uh, when uh, when our girls put their mind to it. All right, we will shift the focus to that Nebraska match on Sunday when we come back. Texas A&M and the Huskers. The Aggie Football Show with head coach Mike Sherman is your all-access pass to Texas A&M football. Join me, Will Johnson, for exclusive interviews, highlights, and behind-the-scenes footage of all your favorite coaches and players. Tune in to hear Coach Sherman's breakdown of the team's performance and everything else surrounding his program. Check your local listings for airtime or go to AggieAthletics.com for program information. Don't miss an episode. Watch the Aggie Football Show with head coach Mike Sherman every week throughout the fall season. The 2011 NCAA Indoor Championship coming this spring to Aggieland. Welcome back to the Aggie Soccer Show. As we just told you a moment ago, Texas A&M was upset by the Colorado Buffaloes on Friday at home. The fifth-ranked Aggies fell and then had to go out on the road. Sunday, the match was against the Nebraska Cornhuskers in Lincoln. No easy task considering uh, the Huskers going into Sunday hadn't lost at home in a while. No, they had, uh, they had just beaten Texas uh, on the Friday night in, uh, in a, 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 big, a big win for them. And, you know, but they've gotten accustomed to winning at home. They hadn't lost at home for uh, 18 games in a row, mm -hmm. which takes you back a couple years. And uh, so for us to go in a little bit wounded, uh, we, were, we were concerned. Uh, we weren't, weren't sure how completely how our, our team would respond. But uh, again, very proud of our players. And, and I've said this before that, you know, 
of all the great teams we've had and, and the great players that we've had, as far as the, the people on this team, uh, you know, our, we've got some great, great young ladies on this team. Just, just the best types of people that you'd ever want to be around. And you know, there's no, there's no doubt in the character that that, that these that these players have. And, and and again, I'm always impressed by the way they step step up to uh, to challenges. And in this particular case, to go into Lincoln, a team with a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum. You know, we go in, uh, and uh, I think we, we went in with a, a good battling mentality, and uh, we, we went on the, on the uh, scoreboard first with uh, Alyssa Motts basically catching the, other, catching the Cornhuskers keeper a little by surprise, hit a shot from probably 35 yards that uh, kind of swerved, and that's what, what this Jubilani ball does from Adidas. It does swerve and caught the goalkeeper uh, kind of wrong-footed, and we end up one nothing. Then uh, just a few minutes later, uh, a, a, a call – interesting call is made and they get a free kick and a deflection happens on the free kick and ends up in the back of the net so it's one one at halftime but uh a lot of things were going our way in that i thought that we create a lot of good chances a lot of really good play by our midfield to create some good chances uh their goalkeeper is ejected for a violent a violent tackle on uh on Alyssa Motts, which gives us a, a one player advantage for uh for the last half of the match and uh, we were able to use that to our benefit uh, it all comes down to uh, putting pressure on their team and pushing, putting pressure on their goalkeeper. And uh, in the 70, 70th minute, Bree Young steps up big for us again, hits a, a free kick that I mean, it looked like it, initially it looked to me like it was going to go over the goal, and the bottom dropped out of out of it right at the last second, and uh, keeper wasn't able to handle it, ends up in the back of the net, and then uh, we kind of make a stand to hold on to it. Had a couple chances late to uh, put the nail in the coffin and make it a 3-1 win. Uh, but again, uh, Nebraska doesn't quit. They, uh, they stood up and we were able to uh, still get out of there with a, a really big 2-1 victory. And now we're right back in the, in the middle of the, uh, of the Big 12 race. And we go on the road again this week yeah. at, a, at a, a tough place for us to play. Uh, Kansas has always given us a, a real fight at their place and they've, uh, they've beaten us at their place before. So we know we're in for a, uh, a battle. We know that uh, nothing is ever easy in this conference. And, our, uh, our goals, obviously, are always to win the thing, and you've got to be able to do your best uh, on the road, and we're going to have to do it again this Friday. Yeah, with this match against Kansas, you know, you've played good teams on the road. You've beat good teams away from home. Are you at a point now this season where an away game from your home venue is no longer as big as a concern as it might be with the team? Well, I think it's as much of a concern as just because the team you're playing is that much more comfortable right. in their surroundings. And again, uh, Kansas will be, will be uh, more comfortable playing there than if they were playing here at our place. And uh, so I don't know that I'm ever at ease going into <laughs> any match, especially in, in this conference, as competitive as it is. Uh, I, I would think that we're going to get a lot of teams into the NCAA tournament from the Big 12 this year. And so... Uh, you know, we've got to just, uh, I know it's cliche, but we really just have to focus on this particular mm -hmm. match. And really, we've got to just focus on the first half of this match and make sure that we get off to a good start because Kansas is not going to give us anything. We're going to have to earn anything we get. All right, and the next time you can catch the Aggies back here in College Station, it's October 8th against Baylor. Also that weekend, October 10th, Texas Tech will be out at the Aggie Soccer Stadium and always looking forward to getting back in front of the 12th man. Absolutely, and you know that's the, that weekend is the same weekend that uh, football plays in the uh, Southwest Classic mm -hmm. up at uh, up in Arlington, which is obviously a, a fun a fun time. That, that being a 2:30 kickoff gives uh, I think a lot, our fans a chance to stay here for our, our match on Friday night and still make the make the trip up to Arlington in time to uh, tailgate and st and mm -hmm. uh, support the Ags in that one and, and get back for Sunday. So we're excited to get back there, but we got a, we got a road through mm -hmm. through uh, Lawrence, Kansas before we get back. All right, good luck up in, Lawrence. Thanks for the time, Coach. Thank you. That's you, your area right here on the Aggie Soccer Show. We'll see you next week.